Excuse me, ma'am. Your card has been declined. Like, sis, why are you so loud with it? Why are you so loud with it? Why is it never quiet? Why is it never? Excuse me, ma'am. Your card's been declined. It's always, excuse me. Your card's been declined. Listen, if this has ever happened to you, then you need to watch this video and learn how to live on a budget. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Money and Makeup with me, Ashley Taylor Grease. I am so happy to be back when I say that these videos are the highlight of my week. So I'm so glad to be sharing these with you and I really hope you get value out of them. Make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe. This week, we are going to be talking about budgeting while I complete my date night look. Now you might be asking, why am I doing budgeting with date night look? But listen, dating is part of my budgeting plan. <laughs> now, if you're like me, you don't like budgeting, you don't like having limits on yourself, but budgeting is a necessary evil. And trust me, if you've ever been to a shop and done the beep and got the beep beep back, then you need to be on a budget because those cashiers will never ever things quietly. They will always be like, excuse me, ma'am, your card has been declined. It's never quiet. It's why can't we just say, excuse me, your card's been declined. It's always, excuse me. Like, let me just steal something to be petty. I'm joking. I don't do that anymore. So if you don't want that secondhand embarrassment, I would strongly recommend that you watch this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe. We're having budgeting tips as well as date night look. So let's start this video. Let's be honest. Budgeting is no fun, okay? I get no enjoyment out of living on a budget, but you know what? It's an important life skill. Think of millionaires, think of baseball players, football players, basketball players, business people, entertainers, all of these different types of people who make so much money. And then for whatever reason, whether they lose their job or bad investments, we hear that they're broke. It's like, bro, where did all your money go? But those people didn't learn how to live on a budget. So really, it's not about being rich or being poor. It's about living within your means. Budgeting is just living within your means. And if you can't live within your means, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It really does not. So although this is not fun, I'm going to share with you my tips for budgeting. You know, as usual, I will share what I know. I did some research. I talked to a couple of people. and I'm just going to put all that information together into something that you can consume within 20 minutes. The first thing I would say, if you want to be on a budget, is to know why, okay? What is your goal? And make that a smart goal, okay? So make it something that is measurable. Make it something that is achievable. You know, something that you can actually do, right? So say, for example, you want to be on a budget because you want to come out of your overdraft. Right. Or you want to be on a budget because you want to be better at spending money. Being spe better at spending money is not a smart goal. But you can say as your smart goal, I want to get to the end of each month without having to borrow money. Or you can say I want to get to the end of each month and have 500 pounds in my bank account. I want to get to the end of each month and not be in overdraft. Right. That is a smart goal. So first of all, have your smart goal and have a strong reason for why you want to achieve that goal. I, it's very important to have a reason why you're achieving that goal because a lot of us spend money emotionally, right? So what you need is a reason to remind yourself, you know, when you're feeling low or when that person didn't text you back or you're feeling fat or whatever, you have an actual reason not to continue the habits that aren't really going to help you be your best self. <laughs> Secondly, put that goal everywhere, okay? Put that goal everywhere. Put it on your desktop, on your computer, put it on your screensaver as your phone. If you have Alexa or, you know, one of those apps that remind you of things, then set it up as a reminder every day. Now, I really like Alexa because there's something in it called routines, right? And so if you have the app on your phone, 
what you can do is you can schedule Alexa to tell you something at a set period of time. Now, I don't use this for budgeting, but Alexa gives me a compliment <laughs> at one o'clock every day and it always picks me up, right? So I put it at the time where I need to hear it the most. So whatever time of the day you need to hear, okay, stick to your budget or more importantly, I, whatever your smart goal is, then I would make Alexa tell you that every single day. It, it really works, you know, because you forget about it and then it's like, oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't buy three new pairs of shoes. So do that, but put that goal everywhere. Next, I would say delete all of your cards, okay? Delete all of your cards. So if you have your cards saved on Google Pay, if you have your cards saved on Amazon, whatever app you spend a lot of money on so if it's saved on pretty little thing if it's saved on asos all of the apps that where you spend a lot of money especially if you spend a lot of money impulsively delete them delete the app what this does is it makes it harder for you to go in and impulsively spend money because you have to go find your card you have to like input all the numbers it just takes a little bit longer and just by putting that hurdle in front of you it's like i don't even want this fishnet bodysuit like where am i gonna wear it because what we're actually trying to do is just put a little bit more hurdles we're just trying to make it a little bit harder for us to spend that amount of money right so that i find is a great way to do that one thing that i do sometimes is i take my cards out of my purse and i just hide them somewhere so i hide them in different places so like i'll put let me not tell you where i hide my cards but i hide my cards in different places and it's not because i think anyone's gonna steal them it's just so that i forget where they are and so i can't necessarily go and impulse buy things Next, I would say, like a lot of people say, look, if you're going to, um, if you want to spend less money, then reduce your overdraft. And while in theory, that's a good idea. And I think everybody should have a very small overdraft. Like my overdraft is only 200 pounds, right? And I don't make six figures, but I'm getting very close. But I still have an overdraft of only 200 pounds because I know as soon as I have it, I'm just going to spend it also at this point let me mention that i try to do my own nails so on this hand it doesn't look too bad right it looks okay if you go in you can see it's lumpy but on this hand oh my gosh it looks like freddy freddy krueger did my nails and one of them is already cracked so i'm gonna have to do that again but this is not money and manicures this is money and makeup and manicures is something i'll just admit i am not very good at but a lot of people say you know, reduce your overdraft, reduce your overdraft. And yes, you should reduce your overdraft, but reduce your overdraft in one go, okay? So don't say, oh, I'm gonna reduce my overdraft by 50 pounds every month for however long. And the reason why you don't do that is because every time you make a claim to either increase or decrease your overdraft, you're setting up a credit request, right? And when you set up a credit request, it affects your credit. A lot of people didn't know that. I didn't know that. There was one time where I I increased my overdraft like six times in one month. And I'm like, why is my credit so terrible? And I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been making all these credit requests. So if you are going to do that, make sure you do it in one go. Now my eyes aren't finished, but I'm gonna clean them up and I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup. And when it's done, I'll come back and finish my eyes. So another thing that I would suggest you do, and this is something that I've done myself in the past and it's worked really well, is to send your income, not to a checking account, but to a savings account. Okay, so change your payment instructions from your employer to a savings account. And the reason why you should do this is because most people just spend what is in their bank account, right? So if the money is not in your bank account in the first place, you're going to spend less. Think about when you were a student, right? We lived on very little money, but we made it work. When we were, we've all been poorer before and we made it work because the money just wasn't there. So again, it's about just tricking yourself into not seeing the money. 
So say for example, you only want to spend 500 pounds a month. Yeah. So that's not including bills. That's not including mandatory expenses. That is only, you know, your disposable income. Now, 500 pounds might be a lot. It might not be anything at all, but you know, like you, whatever your set figure is. So you say, okay, I'm only going to spend 500 pounds a month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send myself a hundred pounds a week. Now, most weeks are off all over four weeks, right? So you have a hundred pounds a week and one week you'll have a little bit more money. And on that little bit more money, we'll get to another point, but you can basically use it as a treat for yourself. So all you have in your regular account is that a hundred pounds a week. So what you're going to do now is you're only going to spend that hundred pounds a week. Like everything, it takes discipline. So yes, of course you can go into your bank account and just move the money around, but just by making that a little bit harder. And another thing, if it, if you find that you're constantly going into your banking app and moving money, delete your banking app. Just use it on your laptop or just have it at work, you know? Like make it harder for yourself to access money. That is the key to budgeting. Just make it much harder for yourself to access your money. So that is something that worked really well for me because like I said, I couldn't be bothered to actually keep downloading the app, remember my password and all that stuff, put it in just to transfer 50 quid. Like I would just not spend the money on that thing because most of the time it's not a necessity, right? So all of your bills come out of a different account and your spending money just comes into a completely separate account. Okay, trick yourself, make it harder for yourself to spend money. Another point, prepare yourself for big events, okay? So prepare yourself three months, four months, even six months in advance. Whose birthdays are coming up? Are they big birthdays? Do you have to buy them a present? Can you tell them in advance, look, I'm really trying to save. I'm not gonna be able to buy you a present or, you know, find something cheaper to do with them that's still meaningful. If you have to skip a party, I know we're in lockdown, so a lot of this doesn't apply. But, you know, if you have to skip a party or, you know, you come at the end, you come a bit later, you know, buy the birthday person a drink. But, you know, <laughs> you know, find a way to not spend a lot of money or budget in advance for that week or that day or that afternoon or night, you know. Set yourself up for success. And the best way to set yourself up for success is to have a plan in advance. Again, if you know that you're somebody who spends a lot of money on a night out, make sure there's only a set amount of money in your bank account. You're gonna be drunk, you know? It's gonna be harder for you to remember things, especially if the banking apps are not on your phone. <laughs> it's all coming together. It's all coming together. One thing, that really helps and you have to do a bit of soul searching it sounds weird to soul search about money but you actually have to do a bit of self a bit of soul searching so that you can really understand what your patterns are right so one thing that i realized is that i really like when packages come to my door you know so how do i get packages to my door without spending excessive amounts of money have you heard of subscribe and save subscribe subscribe <laughs> Sub, I can't say subscribe, I swear, I cannot say subscribe and I'm getting so much flack for it, but I always say subscribe, but it's subscribe, 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 subscribe. <laughs> so have you heard of subscribe and save? Subscribe and save, it just sounds weird though. <sighs> anyway, subscribe and save is an Amazon service that means that regular items that you'll use monthly quarterly fortnightly even will come to your door so one thing i've started to do is to have subscribe and save items so i'll have my cat litter i'll have shampoos wipes all that stuff will come via subscribe and save which means i still get oh i have a package la, 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 la. but it's nothing excessive and it's nothing that's going to you know make me broke basically like because like i said it doesn't matter how much money you have if you're just spending all of it like what's the point of even making more money so i would definitely recommend subscribe and save now i know some people have a lot of opinions about 
you know, using Amazon for everything, globalization and all of that stuff. Personally, I love it. I might regret saying that <laughs> in five years, but it's definitely helped me to be smarter with my money if you use it the right way. Another thing that I found really helpful, because like I said, I like to spend money. Spending money makes me happy, but do you know what also makes me happy? Shopping. So one thing that I would do is go through the process, especially of online shopping, right? So pick out the things that you want, put them in your basket, um, try out the colors, try out the sizes, but just don't buy it, right? Just before it gets to actually checking out, go and do something else. Go make a cup of tea, go call somebody, go watch something, go read a book, go learn to trade, you know, go do something else instead of actually buying that thing. And I promise you, you'll forget about it so quickly because often when we go through that shopping process, it's not that we want the stuff, it's just that we want that feeling, you know? So I am a strong believer in not fighting feelings, like just directing them. So I can go through that process, I can do that. If you're somebody that needs to have the item, obviously that's not a good idea for you, but for me, it works really well. And I'll get a notification in, um, in three days from the supplier that's like, hey, you have some items in your basket. And I'll be like, do I really need fluffy high heels? Do I really? So yeah, I just go through that process. I trick myself, I give myself that dopamine hit, but I don't have any less money in my bank account. And even if I wanted that thing really, then, you know, like I could always go back and get it if I wanted to reward myself for reaching my targets. But I'm not just gonna buy it because it's Wednesday and I'm bored and somebody hasn't texted me back in 0.4 seconds. My final point for saving is to remember to reward yourself, okay? How would you want a small child to do something, right? How would you want a small child to do something? You give them little rewards. Speak to yourself like you're a small child. When you do something well, give yourself a reward at the end of the month. If you hit your goal, give yourself a reward. You know, like you have that extra 50, 60, 20 pounds from that month that wasn't a full month. Treat yourself, why not? Get something on sale, order Nando's. Something, you know, not ridiculous, but something that makes life worth living because let's be honest budgeting is not fun especially in the beginning especially when we're trying to replace old habits it's not fun so we have to make it fun we have to reward ourselves okay don't make life boring okay so i'm just gonna go put on my lashes and then this look is complete so guys, here is my date night look as well as tips for budgeting. Like I said, it doesn't matter how much money you make. If you can't live within your means, then you're still living paycheck to paycheck. So if you really want to set up a plan for financial success, then you need to have a budget. Trust me, I don't like budgeting, but it's very, very necessary. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any budgeting tips, then make sure you leave a comment below. Otherwise, like, share, comment and subscribe and make sure you tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your sister, tell your uncle, tell your cousin, tell your cat, tell your dog, tell your baby daddy, tell your baby mama, tell your auntie, tell your uncle, tell your first cousin, tell your second cousin, tell your third cousin, tell your fourth cousin, tell your fifth cousin once removed. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching this video as i said like share comment and subscribe and i will see you monday